Following the reunification of Germany in 1991, German showman Norbert Witt secured the ownership of the East German attraction, Culture Park. In the span of just 10 years, the park went from seeing a wild success and drawing nearly 2 million visitors a year to becoming completely destitute in 2001 and shuttering its doors. Just two years later, Norbert Witt was arrested for hiding almost 100 pounds of cocaine in a defunct theme park ride, the Flying Carpet. He was attempting to smuggle it from Peru, stockpiling the rusted attraction with almost $11 million worth of cocaine before bringing it back to Berlin. This is the story of Spree Park. Norbert was born in Hamburg, Germany on April 27, 1955, before moving to the Bavarian town of Landshut, son to a conman father, while his mother was a teacher. The Wits came from notorious lineage, and Norbert's grandfather was a German circus acrobat, Otto Witt, who became an eccentric fixture in Berlin during the early 20th century. Otto claimed to be a one-time king of Albania, earned through his Ottoman ancestry, and would exhibit around Berlin under the moniker, the King of Albania. Otto Witt wouldn't accept any mail that wasn't addressed to him as such, and was theorized to suffer from Pseudiologia Fantastica, a version of pathological lying where the sufferer is actually convinced of their lies. Nearly all of his outlandish claims have been debunked, including his time on the Albanian throne, and his upstart political party. When the Berlin Wall was constructed in 1961, the Wits found themselves on the communist eastern side, the German Democratic Republic. The family's showman background kept them close to wherever a buck could be made off entertainment. Norbert's dad owned casinos, brothels, and countless rides. It was common practice at the time for an actual individual to own an amusement park ride versus a company or entity. Norbert dropped out of school after the 10th grade, aspiring to be like his grandfather. Just a year later, he would fall in love with Pia Vorlob, a 14-year-old with dark hair and wealthy parents. Culture Park opened in 1969 in the Planterwald district of Berlin on the 20th anniversary of the founding of the GDR. It was the only permanent one of its kind in the GDR, and after some political change, the only amusement park in Berlin. The park was founded on a 29 and a half hectares property, or about 72.9 acres, near the Spree River. It was apparently designed to be intentionally modest to contrast the Western style of theme parks and rides integrated into landscapes with the majority of the complex focused on a simple asphalt area. During these years, Norbert got his start in owning lottery stands for the state-run GDR lottery. From there, he was able to stockpile enough earnings to afford the rental fee for his very first ride, bumper cars. Despite apparently finding relative success, Norbert would enlist the help of his father-in-law, Wilhelm Vorlob, to purchase the Catapult, a roller coaster designed by Anton Schwarzkopf. Schwarzkopf was a famous German engineer that designed countless coasters across the world, including the first roller coaster with a full vertical loop. Although unverified, it was claimed to be the fastest roller coaster in the world at the time when Witt acquired it. Here is Anton Schwarzkopf testing one of his own roller coasters before it was sold.
Norbert owned and exhibited the ride for two years, developing a reputation in East Germany as a formidable showman. All things were running smoothly until a stop at the Hamburg Dom in 1981, a yearly fair in central Hamburg. This is Norbert's ride, the Catapult. These fairgrounds would be the scene of a horrific accident involving seven fatalities and 15 seriously injured. And believe it or not, Norbert Witt was charged with being directly responsible. The charges? Negligent homicide resulting in bodily harm. The verdict? Only one year of a suspended prison sentence. Witt's treatment was no doubt heightened by his choice of representation, star German defense lawyer Rolf Bossi. Bossi was known for defending actors such as Romy Schneider and Ingrid Van Bergen. Van Bergen famously shot her lover and money broker Klaus Naths and was only sentenced to seven years in jail. Bossi came at a high price tag, but finessed Witt's charges into a light one-year suspended sentence about a month and a half for each of the seven deceased. Part of the reason for the reduced sentence was the confusion surrounding the actual event and who the onus fell onto. Here is a rough recreation of the timeline surrounding the incident. August 13th, 1981. At 12.45 a.m., Vincenzo Menescalco is at the Hamburg Dom to pick up his wife from the Cathedral Bakery, but she says to come back at 1.15 to allow her enough time to close up. At 12.50 a.m., Norbert Witt notices the gearbox of the catapult was broken. He instructs his workers to begin dismantling the piece, allowing it to be removed. At 12.54 a.m., Menescalco takes a stroll to the area with rides, and he hears the Skylab worker shouting, Last ride, last ride. Get on now, last ride. With still a little bit more time to kill, he decides to try out the Ferris wheel. From 12.54 a.m. to 12.56 a.m., Menescalco impatiently checks the time. The ride is delayed and is taking several minutes to take off. At 12.55 a.m., Witt is under the impression that the Skylab has finished for the night, despite the operating hours ending at 1 a.m. He decides to start up his mechanical crane in the lot right beside the Skylab. At 12.56 a.m., while the ride is in operation, Menescalco hears the ear-piecing screech of the metal gondola floor being ripped away as Norbert's crane enters the ride path of the Skylab Ferris wheel. What happened next will forever be immortalized as the Hamburg Dom disaster, and to this day is the second most fatal amusement park accident in history and the worst accident involving a mechanical ride. Witt claimed the Skylab operator was drunk but these claims would never be proven. Despite the relatively small sentence, Witt's reputation as a showman would forever be tarnished. The catapult ride was kept in storage in Hamburg after the incident and remained there until the storage facility was broken into and vandalized by citizens seeking revenge for the accident. The Wits decided to fade into obscurity and take to the road, packing up their things and traveling through Italy and Yugoslavia with the remaining and more modest rides. For the next nine years, they would essentially live on the road while keeping a close eye on the tensions back home. They apparently re-entered Germany around 1990 with their unification on the horizon, where Norbert attempted to kickstart his career once again. 
Reports claim that no German fairground would offer Norbert space to exhibit with his own equipment until he rented two rides during the Berlin Culture Park in 1990. Following their unification in March 1991, there was a frenzied liquidation of nearly all of the state's owned assets. This included the aforementioned VEB Planterwald Culture Park. Norbert likely understood his reputation would raise red flags throughout the bidding process, so Pia Witt was chosen to represent Spree Park GmbH, who ultimately won the bid over seven other applicants. And so begins the Spree Park Berlin era. Under Witt, the park was transformed to the Western model of theme parks, most notably by purchasing the rides from the shutdown French theme park Marat Police, which was based on historic French novels and stories. Quite a departure from the asphalt squares of 1969. The initial bid allowed the Wits to lease the property from the Berlin Senate, up until 1997, where a leasehold agreement was finally struck to allow them ownership of the grounds. It was also during 1997 that the Witt family became heavily involved in the Christian Democratic Union, a center-right political party. The Witts would deploy Spree Park employees throughout the Treptow district of Berlin to distribute campaign posters and displays. It was later determined that a hundred of the new members signed up by the Witts were actually already deceased. The Witts earned the blind trust of the CDU and in turn is said to have cost the state of Berlin nearly 15 million euros. During the peak of its operation, the park boasted 1.5 million yearly visitors. When 2001 came around, the attendance dropped to as low as 400,000 yearly. By the end of the 2001 season, Spree Park, GmbH & Co. filed for bankruptcy. Witt blamed the attendance issues on the parking limitations for the area, which was capped out around 3,000 spots. The vast planter-walled forest surrounding the park was protected from development, essentially freezing the property in time. Once again, the Wits found their reputation in Germany souring, and their money drying up by the day. Always a man for drama, on January 18th, 2002, Witt decided to pack up his five kids and wife Pia, bringing them 11,000 kilometers across the world to Lima, Peru, along with some of his closest colleagues from Spree Park. His plan was to open a new theme park, named Luna Park, near a horse racing stadium in the Circo district of Lima. Luna Park is a world-famous name shared by 88 theme parks around the world of past and present, based on the 1905 original in Coney Island. He ultimately shipped six attractions from Spree Park to Peru. The Flying Carpet, Butterfly, Spider, Baby Flight, Waltz Ride, and Jet Star, dividing the parts across 20 shipping containers. Witt ran into more bad luck during the shipping process when apparently several of the attractions arrived damaged, delaying the park from opening even further. The problems continued when Peruvian customs officials refused to release the carnival rides in their entirety. Instead, they released individual parts from the shipping containers, making it impossible to assemble a single roller coaster or Ferris wheel. Additionally, Norbert Witt had told his wife Pia that when she came to Lima, he would have a house waiting for her and the kids. By the time she made the trip, Norbert had no rides built, no house, and was sinking further into debt. Despite their insolvency debts coming out to around 11 million euros, they decided to rent an opulent villa in one of Lima's wealthy enclaves. Within months, they would have trouble feeding the family 
and Pia flew back to Germany with four of the five children. Marcel Witt was 21 at the time and the oldest son, and decided to stay back with his desperate father. With the opening of the Lima Luna Park farther away than ever, Norbert was in need of cash and repairs to his damaged equipment. It was here, in a moment of desperation, he connected with an old friend from Berlin, who just happened to be a courier for the Peruvian Mafia. The two devised a plan for Witt to meet his friend's connects in Peru and to secure the physical product, hiding it within parts of his own theme park ride, the flying carpet. Witt led employees to believe he was dismantling the ride and sending it back to Berlin for the guise of repair, stashing 167 kilograms, or 76 pounds, of pure cocaine in the mast of the flying carpet. The only problem, one of Norbert's accomplices was an undercover drug agent, and the smuggling operation was being monitored the whole time. On November 5th, 2003, after attempting to cross through customs in Berlin, Norbert Witt was arrested for the possession and intent to distribute cocaine. While being detained by authorities, Witt would suffer the first of his six heart attacks. Just a day later in Peru, Marcel Witt was also arrested for the same charges. Marcel claims he had nothing to do with the scheme, and the only reason he was implicated was his signature on a shipping slip. Truth or not, Marcel was dealt a harsh sentence, enduring three years in a dilapidated holding cell until he was finally sentenced by the fourth criminal chamber of the Lima court to 20 years in prison. In Berlin, Norbert got off much easier with a seven-year sentence, with four of those years spent in a low-security, open facility. In 2008, Witt was granted early release from the double prison. Pia Witt would seek a divorce in prison and attempt to separate herself and her family from the destructive force that was Norbert. Marcel happened to be staying in one of the world's deadliest prisons, the Sarita Colonna prison in the desperately poor suburb of Callao, Peru, known for its aggressive overcrowding and substandard conditions. When Norbert was released, he decided to reopen Spree Park, now visibly falling apart, for tours, music festivals, and even filming during the 2011 movie, Hannah. The Berlin Property Fund ultimately abandoned a forced auction in 2014 and bought back the leasehold for two million, and the wits were forced to vacate once and for all. When Marcel's story made the rounds of news in 2009, and again in 2015, German politicians clamored for his release. He made sure to reiterate the same points. He wants nothing to do with his father, and he will no longer keep contact with him. Since 2016, a non-profit subsidiary of the state of Berlin has been in charge of the property's management, and is working on an environmentally viable concept for the park, named Nature und Culture Park, to be opened in 2026. Marcel returned to Germany in 2016 after successfully securing a transfer to Moabit, Germany. An article from September 2023 claimed that Marcel was still in German prison, awaiting a soon release. Norbert has remarried and now works as a construction worker in Berlin, putting his mechanical experience to use. The days of Spree Park are now a distant memory for Berlin locals and the infamy of Norbert Witt has finally started to fade. One biography on Norbert Witt claimed he was a massive fan of 50 Cent and would play the album Get Rich or Die Trying on the loudspeakers of the park before it was taken away. I'd like to think he has just one more scheme in the works, and he's hoping to do just that.